if you plan your balance sheet on a linear basis, um, you know, growth will solve all problems in a sense. But there are two points about Indian banking industry. One is your cost of funds, yes. uh, which can be um, very high depending on what the regulator does. The other is inflation, uh, which um, you know, yes. can affect on your profitability. Um, and the third, of course, is uh, asset inflation, which um, you know, the portfolios that you own. Um, how do you see, what do you worry about uh, in terms of the macroeconomic fundamentals of India that can affect your business? No, the biggest worry today is on inflation. Because uh, inflation can uh, affect, uh, and it'll, it'll affect our uh, interest costs, to that extent it can, with a lag effect, can affect our uh, asset quality. Uh, but otherwise, um, as the uh, margins are concerned, uh, we should be able to maintain for the simple reason uh, ability to pass on the in incremental interest uh, on deposit is still intact. So, I mean, we should be able to pass on another 50 basis point increase if it happens. Hmm. If, uh, uh, if uh, the inflation doesn't come down and policy rates moves up and another 50 basis point, the corporates will be able to absorb. Uh, the reason is, 10 years back when this happened, Corporate balance sheet was not very strong. Mm. Uh, today, the corporate balance sheet is quite strong. They, I mean, as an interest component, uh, their absorption capacity is uh, better. But if it crosses 50 basis point, I'm a little worried. It may start impacting. But um, 50 basis point increase can be a challenge with small businesses. So we clearly see risk coming in from there in case interest rate further goes up. So we have a challenge there, right? the inflation is not controlled. Uh, but our reading is, um, I think inflation should get uh, softening. You, you think there will be softening in inflation? I think so. That's what we feel, but, uh, India is not very good at managing its core inflation. I think food prices uh, and, and, and today housing costs, um, it's a country where there's a lot of inefficiencies. Um, and on, on top of which there is a lot of government um, subsidies that are very difficult to, to, to remove. Um, what do you think India really needs to do to deal with inflation? Actually, the, uh, the internal discussion that we have uh, within ourselves and with the regulator, uh, given the, uh, the, the conditions in the country, uh, the core inflation may be around 5%. I can't expect in the past, about two years back, are uh, targeting a medium term inflation rate of three percent. But today core inflation may be around five percent. We come around to that thinking. If the economy is growing at about let's say over nine percent, um, when there is a pressure, uh, actually the first beneficiary of the governmental program today uh, uh, is um, the purchasing power of these model. And the first demand comes in the food and uh, the, the nutrient food. Uh, that's where the, uh, while India is the third largest producer of most of the food items, but still the demand itself is going up so much, it's expected to be able to impact the inflation. So I, I don't think in a medium term basis, you'll have a core inflation coming below 5%, and we have to live with that sort of uh, higher level of inflation, which is recognized. But having said that, the action, uh, number one, we may have to definitely tackle agriculture productivity. Because if this country has to import, there's no country which can supply. The well, whole how, thing is expected to go up. How do you, as a chairman of a state bank, with, I think you've got 20% uh, exposure to agriculture? We have about yeah, 78%. Right. Um, mm -hmm. How do you view what needs to be done in the agricultural sector in India? And, and traditional bank lending effectively meant that you write off a lot of that loan. Uh, so it's more like a state-directed lending um, policy. In fact, uh, a lot of foreign analysts don't appreciate that, that element of state banks in, in India. Um, what do you think needs to change in the agricultural well, actually, sector? Actually, a lot of things uh, need to change. Actually. I mean, as I said, with a corrective respect to you, the land holding is small. Um, we, uh, we don't have uh, post-harvest uh, you know, uh, capacity built. 
So from um, the farm to plate, 50 percent of the produce gets wasted. So there are quite a lot of things that uh, has to happen. It is in its making. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we are not only as a bank but as a policy makers at all levels are focusing on and we need to get that right. You know, all of us realize that. It's a, a different fact of matter that in the past uh, we focused on more on the subsidy based um, you know, on I mean, lending to agriculture. But to me, the realization is very clear. We need to create uh, um, you know, um, <coughs> warehouses, we need to create go-downs, we need to create markets, we need to create um, um, I mean, uh, negotiable warehouse machine to financing the capabilities whole lot of things and a lot of action is taking place on a basis. But it's, as I said, in most of these areas is unfinished work, but the intent to work on this is very important. And how banks themselves lend to the agricultural sector or, or are involved in the agricultural sector, is, is that changing? Do you, do you see it's how? It's really changing because uh, uh, the uh, point is, um, while we talk about 60% of our population dependent on agriculture, the fact when you go on the ground is not the 60 percent are dependent on the agriculture. It's a small part of the 60 percent who are actually dependent on, uh, on the agriculture. But the whole chain that needs to be cre created, that is where our focus is now coming. Uh, creating, as I said, um, uh, post harvest capabilities and a whole lot of things. We're all there. The government has been taking, <coughs> going in the direction of increasing its state in the stable banks. Yes. What's the message there and how does that tie your hands or how does that limit you or even create, gives you opportunity uh, as a result of the government taking a policy of wanting to own the state-owned banks even more than they do right now? Uh, I mean, I, uh, let us look at it slightly differently. First, uh, as a banking institution, uh, if you look at Basel 3 requirement, there is a need for capital. The biggest challenge for bankers today is not whether government has ownership, but the biggest challenge for bankers today is whether you're able to support your growth by capital. That's the biggest challenge across the across the world. So if that is so, the capital is a must. Now, your ability to raise capital is directly linked to return on equity. And given the regulation, the way it is evolving, if you look at uh, the uh, norms of liquidity, Norms for, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I don't think uh, it is uh, possible to raise such a huge capital. It, with this as a background, uh, I would say government agreeing to bring in capital to meet the capital requirement is positive at this point. Okay. And very, very positive. The government would have said, I have so much of a constraint in terms of budget. Uh, I, I mean, how can I bring in capital? Where do you go for the capital? That's the first one. Second point, it gives you leeway. So, for example, if you take Union Bank, we have a capital deficit of 55, I mean, the, the government will be 55%. The government can come up to 51%. That means I have 4% space. I'm growing at about 25%. My book is growing at 25%. That means I need capital. In case government increases the stake to 58% or 60%, next round, after a year or so, I can go for a, a right issue. But the government will also bring in and other minority shareholders. So you have an ability to support growth. That's the first point. Second point is, in Indian situation, whether government as an owner has constrained the performance of the banks, the history doesn't show any way it has a negative impact. It is totally ownership neutral. If it is not so, in 2010 and 2000. 2000 to 2010, you look at all the numbers, you compare with the private sector banks and public sector banks. The numbers of public sector banks are substantially improved, be it profitability, productivity, or the growth. So it is totally ownership neutral. Why it is so? The government is represented on the board by one member who looks at the government policy implementation, which is equally true for private sector. They are not uh, away from that, except that the government is not represented by the, by the government. But otherwise, there is total autonomy for me as a chairman and managing director or my board to perform. So it, it has no point in time hinder our ability to compete 
Thank you.